Hi folks, we're back. My pal Jimmy. Hi everybody. Larry, just want to remind the people that whenever, whenever you see something you like, hit like, subscribe, and then you'll get notification when the new podcast is to watch Larry's show. And then you know, tune, in, tune in with us. And great to see everybody. Hi there. Okay, um, once again, during the week, after every podcast, I've been getting a lot of calls, again, stating the fact that I look old and tired. By the way, nice shirt, Larry. Uh, well, I wear this for my friend who's keeping <laughs> track of my shirts. And, and by the way, pal, it's not a solid color. There's shades of dark blue. And, I can verify uh, that. And it's another $300 job. Um, I'd like to see his closet. <laughs> no, I'm sure he's well-dressed. I'm sure he pays attention to, to, to clothes. Most people pay attention to what I'm saying. He pays attention to clothes. And by the way, I have probably maybe 30 or 40 shirts, all high-end stuff I never even wear yet. Um, I have no reason to wear them. Um, and it's stupid to put a shirt on to walk your dog, which is basically what I do until the rider strikes yeah. over. Larry might have to have, let me wear them because after from being away, uh, my uh, my. Uh, but I, I wear a, is I, I, I wear a, a lodge, and and if you you're if you're in need of a few shirts, um, I have plenty. Anyway, uh, a while back, I think um, I talked about Kelly Jones. Um, Kelly Jones was the girl that I was with um, at Gulfstream Park. Um, I, I had been holding off on this story because uh, she got in a terrible accident. She got run over by a truck and was in really bad shape. They never thought she'd live. But she, after about a year, she started coming around out of the coma and and um, she's, 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 she's improving every day. And we thought... Um, we talked. I talked with her and, and 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 her father, and it looked like she she'd probably be able to fly up here and um, and come on the show, which is what she wanted to do. Oh, that's but cool. um, I haven't heard from her in a while. She's still in therapy, and uh, so I'm just I'm just I'm just going to tell the story. And uh, when when she, I'll I'll, I'll breeze through it kind of quick, and when she's here, we can get in a little bit more detail. Um, I have her a chapter about her in in the book in, in a lot more detail than what I'm going to go through now. But it was it was um, it was right around 2003. I was racing horses um, at Gulfstream Park in Delaware Park uh, thoroughbreds, and um, I became very very friendly with the leading rider up there, Mike McCarthy. And um, uh, I got a phone call one day from a friend, and he said that a good friend of his uh, had a daughter that wanted to, uh, that was in love with horses and wanted to get involved in the thoroughbred business, that she uh, had limited experience on the farm uh, with the riding horses that she had, but she's ready for the next level. She'd been doing the cleaning stalls and riding these things for years. And uh, so um, I spoke with her father, and her father told me that uh, she's, I think she was 19 or 20. And um, I says, all right, I says, uh, bring it down here, and I'll, I'll teach her all there is to know, and uh, I'll take good care of her. And I think I mentioned this before. I, I was waiting at the barn for her, and uh, up pulls this black, I, 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 I think it was a, um, a firebird or whatever, uh, convertible, and uh, driving is this beautiful, beautiful girl. And I said to myself, geez, I hope this is not her. Um, and it, but it was. And as beautiful as she was, that's a, that's how that's as nice as she was. And um, we got her a place to stay right away, and and then we spent days just talking, days and nights. And I just talk with her, and she's like a sponge. She just, she just, she just soaked everything up and and, and loved it, and uh, was very interested in learning from the anatomy of a horse 
how to recognize lameness, how to treat lameness, how to keep a horse uh, sound, both body and mind. And uh, she, she, she loved it. Now, um, her ambition was to be a trainer and, um, um, and own horses. So she says that her father, well, her father told me that when you think she's ready, just we'll buy some horses. So I called her father up, and, uh, and, and his name was Buddy, Buddy Jones. And I says, Buddy, I says, she's ready. I says, uh, we'll, 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 we'll buy one or two horses. And uh, the first one I want to buy is just an old clunker that's, you know, an old age race horse, cheap that has a few problems because there's nothing like um, having a horse and, and, and showing uh, with a live horse the problems and how to treat them, how they act and how they walk and how they gallop with this type problem and how to maintain it. So we're going to buy one cheap horse and then uh, we'll, we'll just take it from there. So the first horse I bought for her, so sure enough, he sent down, I don't remember, maybe 50, 60,000. So me and Kelly went to the track, and uh, there was this old 10-year-old horse. Um, I, I'm going to keep looking at this book at the chapter because I, I, I forget the horse's name. But the, this particular horse, he was a 10-year-old called Northern Prospector, and he was in a 10,000 claimer. And I told Kelly, I says, uh, we're going to claim this horse because he's old, he's worn out, and I'm sure he has a couple of problems, and it would be he's cheap enough and it would be a great horse for you to 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 learn on we'll we'll figure out i'll show when we get them i'll show you how to recognize the problem how to look for it what to look for and how to treat it so that's what we did we claimed them and uh no we didn't claim them we uh, i went to the owner and uh, and i said your horse is in the ten thousand claimer and uh, i'd like to buy him uh, what's the cheapest you take for him and and and, and i think according to the book here because i don't remember According to the book, we bought him for $9,000. We took the horse back to the barn, and sure enough, he had three or four problems, and uh, he was just basically tired and worn out. And uh, his record showed it, that he was finishing up the track every week, and he's just just racing for eight years of his life in a, in a 10 by 10 stall, and uh, he was just, he just, he yeah, just had enough. The horse gets mentally tired too. Oh yeah, especially, you know, they were born to be in herds and run free. And then you stick them in a 10 by 10 stall for, for 23 and a half hours a day. After 10 years of racing, uh, they, 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 they just want out. Yeah, they had and you enough. very, very rarely see a, a thoroughbred that's 10 years old. Very, very rarely. Usually they, they pack it in six, seven years old. That's, that's the end of them. But anyway, um, I told her that uh, we would we 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 got the horse and we 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 reckoned that we found some lameness problems and everything else. And I says, listen, what we're going to do with this horse is we're going to every every day after we train him, we're going to turn him out in the pasture for the rest of the day until nighttime feeding time. Let him run. Let him, and sure enough, the first day we put him out in the field, he ran around for hours with his tail up in the air, having a ball, jumping and kicking and everything else. And um, and um, that was nice. And and that's what. Oh, he was. He was. He just felt real good. And then we got him a lot sounder too. He had a few problems. I can't remember what they were, and I'm not going to read it here. But um, we we fixed him up. So anyway, we put him in the race, and. Um, the gate opens, he gets left at the gate. And uh, at the wire, he gets beat a lip, right at the wire, gets beat a nose. And there was a trainer there that, um, I'm, I'm only saying this to, 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 so you understand how I felt at the time, because when Kelly, when we bought this horse, Kelly fell in love with this horse instantly. She wanted to sleep with him in a stall, and she just fell in love with him. And then when he finished second by a nose, she was so happy because he got left at the gate. He come from way back and come charging. If the race was another two inches longer, yeah, he would have had it. Sure. So the announcement comes over the speaker that the, this horse, Northern Prospector, got claimed. She cried and cried and cried 
and cried. She cried all night long because the horse got claimed. Claim means somebody else bought the horse out of the race. You're allowed to, it's a claiming race. So you could put in a, any licensed trainer or owner could put in a claim. And the, so now he owns the horse and she cried. I felt so bad for her. I, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I was ready to go offer the guy 10 times the money to give the horse back. She was, she was sick. Now, I have it in the book here, and I, f I forgot all about this. We have it in the book that um, we went to a diner. I, I can't find it. Anyway, we went to a diner, and in the next booth is the guy who claimed the horse, a trainer called w Wolfendale, I think his name was. Wolfendale. And uh, I, I can't find it. Anyway, <clears throat> he's sitting with some people, and he says, yeah, that, that's, that must have been the owners that claimed that horse. He says, yeah, this is, uh, see that girl over there? That She cried when we claimed her horse, and, uh, well, fuck her. So I got up from the table. That's why I wanted Kelly here, because she could verify all these stories. I got up from the table, and he was sitting with his owners. And I says, let me tell you something. You mention one more fucking word, I'll put a pitchfork right through your chest. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Don't ever mention her name again. And I walked back to the thing, and Kelly started crying again. Okay. Now, that's why I wish she was here, because she, she could tell the story better than me, how she felt and everything. So now, now she's, I got to get her another horse right away. So we, we're looking for another horse, and uh, in a maiden $30,000 claimer, there was a horse in there called 49er Gold. He was a three-year-old, maiden, never raced, and um, he was in a, a, a claiming race for $30,000. I said, you want to take a shot with this horse? Now we went from an old horse that needed work. You, you're pretty well, you right, know what to right, do and right. everything there. Now we now now that you know that we have to keep in mind, keeping them in state of mind, a good state of mind is just as important as keeping them sound. Right. Um, you, you you know that. It's pretty routine. Now we'll get a, a young horse, which is really the name of the game, getting young horses and learning how to train them and, and let them proceed. So we claimed the horse for $30,000. He finished up the racetrack. And now um, we bring the horse back, and now she was all... She says, she says, oh, we finished so bad. What do you think? You think we may... I says, listen, we'll, we'll, fi we'll figure it out. This is all a learning process. Right, Your father right. knows that that money that, that we, he sent up was for you to get involved and, and learn. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But the horse finished terrible, we're going to figure out why. Right. And if he's a rat, he's a rat. We made a bad claim. That's the problem with claiming races. But we'll figure it out. So sure enough... We bring the horse back, and I have him scoped. I think it's someplace in here. Um, we found that he had a, a tumor in his throat, and he had a breathing, a breathing problem, a flat problem, bleeding problem, and he had enough problems that were new that the other horse didn't have that she would, she would learn how we got rid of the tumor, how we got wow. rid of uh, fixing, he had a paralyzed, well, it wasn't paralyzed, it was almost paralyzed, a flap and uh, a breathing problem. We fixed, I tell her how to do it, we did it, I showed her how to do it, we did it ourselves along with the veterinarian, and um, he had a bit of a lameness problem too, we fixed that. We put the horse in, into race. Mm -hmm. I think it was a 40 or 50 claim, and we raised him up, because she fell in love with this horse too. And uh, horse wins by 10 lengths, just going away. She was so happy. And in fact, in the book, here's the winner's circle picture of that race. And it's going to be on the... So, and these pictures too will be on, on the website. So now she's, she's happy. Now, I get her a trainer's license during this period of time, because we went from from Gulfstream back to Delaware Park, back to Gulfstream. Now, um, now we're back, we race a go, then we're back in Delaware Park. And um, 
with the help of Mike McCarthy, I got her a trainer's license for thoroughbreds. I got her her exercise license, rider's license, because you got to get other exercise riders to approve you. And an exercise rider, what it does is it exercises horses, just like you're in a race only in the right, mornings. Right. And, um, and you could be an outrider or whatever, but it's, it's tough to get. Anyway, she was a real good rider. I got her all her licenses. Now, um, I'm getting a bit tired of the thoroughbred game only because I'm used to the standard breads. In the standard bread business, harness horses, you race every seven days, every seven days. Every, every standard bred horse has 35, 40 starts. Every, every one, every week they race, every seven days you race. The thoroughbreds race every three weeks. The average start for a thoroughbred every, each year is seven or eight starts the most, some wow. only three or four. So now we only have a couple of horses and the, the weight in between. I'm looking, okay, the horse win by 10 lengths. And now I got to wait three weeks before he could race again. To me, that's, that's bullshit. It's not necessary. Oh, oh he needs a right. long rest. He needs time. And, and that's, that's a whole other story, which I'm going to get into. I'm trying to get, what I'm trying to get is a thoroughbred trainer that, that believes that thoroughbreds are much more delicate and everything and they need a longer time in between races and all of that kind of stuff. I want them to sit right here, right between me and you, and, 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 ha and have this discussion. Now, um, but that, that'll probably never happen. But anyway, so now I call up a father. And I says to her father, I says, look, we've been together now maybe a year or two years. I says, and she, right now, she knows more than all the thoroughbred trainers put together. And she not only knows more, but she's an ex. She can ride. She 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 can train. She's licensed for everything. Now it's time for the next step, and the next step is young horses, two-year-olds. Nobody ever became rich racing claiming races. That's my thing with the standard breads and even with the thoroughbreds. But with the thoroughbreds, it's too long in between races. I'm right. an action guy. I got I gotta have action. I even when I play gin rummy, if I, I get my first ten cards, if it adds up to eighty points, I knock with eighty points. Just give me ten more cards. I, I can't play right. a hand. I know I can't win. So let me pay and get it over, give me ten more cards. So um, that's why I never went playing poker except once. So, and I'll tell that story. That's when we got robbed. The only time I was ever winning, we got the place got robbed. And that story, the whole racing world knows about it because it was the only time I ever won. <laughs> I had all the money, and three black guys come through the door and put a gun in my head. And not only me, everybody else. But that, that's another story. So anyway, I call up a father, and I says to a father, I, I, I says uh, he, he he lives in uh, in Tampa. I think Tampa. He had a big business. Wealthy guy. Nice guy. And a uh, real nice guy. And he came down. We were in Delaware. He came down, and um, I told Kelly I sent for him. And she says, why? I said, well, I want to talk to both of you. So we go for breakfast, and I says, listen. I says, uh, I'm going to go back into the standard bread business. I said, this, I can't wait this long in between races. And if you don't have 30 or 40 horses... Uh, where you can have a different horse yeah, race every have week. A different term, I, right. I can't have two, three, four horses and 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 race every 10 days, 15 days, every two. I can't do that. So plus, the name of this game is the young horses, the stake races. That's where that's where you can become wealthy if you get lucky and uh and that's where all the, the higher-end people meet. Right. In the claiming game, you meet all the stumble bumps, you know. So I says, so I'm going to go back into the standard bread business, and but I'm going to leave you with, what the hell's his name? Um, oh, shit. I'm going to leave you with... Um, I forgot his name. It'll, it'll come to me. The trainer. A trainer. Right. Who, whose wife, Amy, 
was uh, was a jockey with uh, the same year Julie Crone was. She was she was a better jockey than Julie Crone, but she packed it in when she married um, when she married this guy. I almost had his name again. It'll come to you. And uh, so sh sh they're, they're married. So now they buy yearlings. She breaks them. She exercises them. She trains them. It's it's a whole it's a whole. It, it, you got the whole package right there between between the trainer and and his wife, and they only deal in young horses. And um, Kelly starts crying. She says, "Larry, you're not going to leave, are you?" And I says, "Yeah." I says, "I this game is not for me. It's too you know it's too much and of I, a weight." And, right. and, and I and I I explained it, and she cried and she cried, and uh, so. They go with Bruce Jackson. That's the trainer, Bruce Jackson. They go with Bruce. And uh, after a month or two, the father, Bruce talks the father into buying more and more horses, and, and he gets more and more horses, and before you know it, they're up to 30 horses. And Kelly calls me all the time. I'm not happy. I can't stay with him. He don't know what you know and all of that kind of stuff, and... Training two-year-olds is different, and, blah, 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 and she wasn't happy. <laughs> and then I, I says, but that's the game you should be in. You stay with, with uh, Amy, his wife. She's a rider, too. She's a great rider, great trainer, very, very sharp lady, very, very sharp, and turned out to be a good friend of mine. She did me a lot of favors. And Bruce, too. Bruce is a good guy. So anyway, so now... She calls me up in the middle of the night one night, crying. I said, what's the matter, Kelly? She says, the barn burnt down and all our 30 horses got killed. Oh, God. So, you know, what, what are you going to say? She's crying and crying and crying. So I talked to her for a couple hours or whatever, and then I, I get a hold of her and her father the next day. And, and I said, listen, I says, um, I says, racing horses is a tough game. I says, especially in the, the, the only way you should be in it is with the two-year-olds. But out of the maybe 20, 30, uh, uh, thousand two-year-olds that are sold each year, you got a handful that make it. So it's it's a game for the wealthy. You're wealthy, but who wants to lose this money? I'm just telling you the way it is. So um, he says, well, what do you think I should do? He says, we have the insurance money for the bond. Uh, we're going to rebuild the bond. And um, I says, look, Kelly's not happy. And every time something happens to a horse, it's like a, a it's like the end of the dramatic world, right? affair. Right. I says, you have a barn, because Bruce Jackson had a barn at Fair Hill, which is the biggest training center where you, these barns, 40 stalls, they cost a million dollars, and all the top guys are there. Bruce Jackson had a barn. He also had a farm a couple of miles away w with another barn there. So he had the whole, he had, a, he had everything, a perfect situation. I says, if I was you, what I would do is, you have a captive audience here. You have 5,000 5, acres, I think it is, of training center. You got all the top trainers here. What I would do is I would have that barn built as a therapy center. Now, that's between you and me. Don't tell Bruce. Maybe Bruce wants to stay in the training business. I, I don't know. But if it was me, I'd have a therapy center. And in that therapy center, I, put, I would put a hy yeah. hyperbaric chamber... No, that's different than an epoxic chain. A hyperbaric chamber is forced oxygen, which heals everything 30% faster, 70% uh, faster. Uh, and have a swimming pool, have a, a, a treadmill, underwater treadmill, have salt water therapy. That's the same thing have, when they put the horse's legs in the... In the, in the yeah, yeah. It, it, all kinds of therapy right. for horses. Have a vet on the payroll, and, and that's it. I says... You'll have a thousand horses. Right, it's like a spa for horses. Exactly. 
and you could charge whatever you want to charge because there's nothing like this in the whole United States, what I'm telling you to build. And I can get you the hyperbaric chamber because then people, when they first come up with it, they contacted me years before. They wanted me to be the distributor for the whole, this whole uh, mm -hmm. Southeast thing. So that's what they did. And right now today, it's the largest they're making. They, I think they, they just bought another farm. Better than worrying about winning races. Yeah. They ju it's, and the what they do is, I, I'm almost positive, I'm not sure, but I'm almost positive the last time I spoke with them, they charge $80 per day, per horse, just to stay in the stall. Then whatever therapy is after That's that. It's all extra. It's all extra. Wow. So you go in a hyperbaric chamber, you go in there for an hour, I think it's $300. It's booked wow. 24 hours a day. Wow. And 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 then and then all the you other gave them a all, gold all mine. The other, they have they have a gold mine. He Please. just he, last time I spoke with him was a couple about a month ago. He says they just had to buy another farm. They have over eighty horses on the other farm, and their barn, that whole therapy barn, it's completely booked. They're making millions and millions of dollars. Unfortunately, Kelly got in an accident. She, uh, I I hope she's doing well. I haven't spoken to her in in oh, maybe two months, uh, but that. Um, that uh, is something that um, it could have been me. It should have because been. Kelly Kelly wanted, but but at, at the time, the road we were on were racing horses. Right. I really wasn't interested in anything else except racing horses. Had I thought about a therapy barn at Fair Hill. I would have first have to buy a barn of my own because Bruce Jackson, now Bruce Jackson's out of the picture had I stayed, but there were no right. barns available. As soon as the barn becomes available, one of the top trainers, they, they just buy it up. So that really could never work, but uh, good for them. Kelly, Kelly Jones is recuperating. Her father is extremely happy, making a ton of money, Bruce Jackson's happy, and Amy calls me <laughs> maybe once a week, and um, and we talk. Uh, but but they 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 they're doing good. I would have loved to have Kelly here, but um, because of she can't miss her therapy and She's everything else. She's right. recuperating. She's recuperating, but maybe someday she'll come. She's a wonderful, wonderful girl. Her father is a great person. Bruce Jackson's a great guy. And Amy is just wonderful. And uh, that's it for today. See ya. <laughs> Everybody, uh, enjoy what you like to see each time, each podcast with us. Uh, hit like, subscribe, and again, have that bell rung for you so you know when each podcast is coming up. And uh, tell a friend. Thanks, thank you for watching, and good night, guys. See ya.